How's it going guys, Vabov here and welcome to an Apple M1 Mac Mini editing test of sorts. So I've got the eight gigabyte variant of the Mac Mini and I've been using it for about two weeks now editing on Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, as well as DaVinci Resolve. And I thought I'd make this video following the poll I had yesterday over on Twitter, which pretty much asked which editing software people use on a regular basis. And at the time of recording this video, I think Premiere Pro is winning that battle. And I thought I'd make this video because a lot of people are interested in picking up the Mac Mini for editing purposes only. I'm one of those people and the editing software of choice of course depends on what their workflow really is. So if you're looking for a final cut solution, I guess the Mac Mini is the more natural choice. But for people who use DaVinci Resolve as well as Adobe Premiere Pro, how does the Mac Mini perform? Okay, so one of the things that I want to make clear before we proceed with this test is that Adobe Premiere Pro is running off of the Mac Mini over on Rosetta. So it's basically Intel's architecture and that's how it's running on the M1 Mac Mini, whereas both DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro are running off of the M1. They're optimized programs and that obviously makes a huge difference because if you checked out my previous video where I used Handbrake to encode a series of different videos, the Handbrake that was optimized for the M1 chipset actually delivered 40% faster results. So this is something to keep in mind and of course I'll be making another separate video revisiting this whole scenario once we get a Premiere Pro version optimized for the M1 chipset as well. But with that said, let's get into the editing experience. We're gonna start with the experience and then move on to rendering times because I feel like they're equally as important. So Premiere Pro, it's not the best experience if you ask me. Uh, sort of editing and scrubbing between footage is choppy. And if you wanna play back 4K footage regularly, after you play it back a few times, things start to get very laggy and you need to sort of give the machine a bit of a rest before you can start editing. So if you're looking for high-end editing at 4K or higher resolutions, I don't think Premiere Pro is best suited in this scenario at this moment in time on the Mac Mini running the M1 processor. With Final Cut Pro, it's very, very smooth. And that's not a big surprise considering Final Cut Pro is probably the most optimized software for the Apple M1 chip. And likewise, DaVinci Resolve is similar. So it's also got a beta running off of the M1 chipset and scrubbing between footage, whether that's 4K, 8K and playing it back and sort of previewing it, all of that is very, very smooth. So I think both Final Cut Pro as well as DaVinci Resolve are very smooth during the editing process, whereas Premiere Pro is a bit choppy, a bit laggy, and that is something you should keep in mind. So if you were paying attention in the previous few clips, you'd have seen the exact timeline that we're gonna render in this video using DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, as well as Final Cut Pro. It's a five minute, 53 second file, a made up of 4K and 8K footage from the Galaxy S20 Ultra of Samsung. And I thought I'd make this a bit more complicated so some of the clips have been sped up, some of them have been slowed down, some of them have been overlaid one on top of each other. And I think this sort of complexity gives it more of a realistic feel if you ask me. And I've plopped in a music track in the background as well. And that is what we're gonna render. So the final file that we're gonna render in, it's gonna be the exact same settings, 4K 30 FPS, H.264 file with the same audio settings, same everything. And let's see which program does the better job. Adobe's Premiere Pro comes in first from the end, rendering this entire clip in five minutes and 59 seconds. Next up, we have DaVinci Resolve, which renders this clip in five minutes and five seconds, whereas the final and sort of the winner of this entire test is Final Cut Pro, which renders this clip in four minutes and 24 seconds. So from the results, you can see that Premiere Pro is the worst and Final Cut Pro is the best. These are results that are expected. I think Final Cut Pro is supposed to be the most optimized for the M1 chip. And likewise, you get the best performance when it comes to rendering as well as video editing. DaVinci Resolve is sort of a middle ground because it gives you a good video editing experience and it's a fast enough export process. I think it's only about 30 seconds more than Final Cut Pro there and thereabouts. But with Premiere Pro, you not only get a very, very very poor editing experience when you extensively edit 4K as well as 8K files, but the rendering time is also huge. And this was another poll I made over on Twitter, which one people preferred, was it rendering times or was it editing experience? And a lot of people preferred editing experience over render time. So 
If you are someone who wants editing experience, I'd say DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro is the way to go. And if you are someone who wants render times to be faster, again, the same two programs. But this is with a major disadvantage to Adobe's Premiere Pro software, which isn't optimized for the M1 chipset. And I think this sort of gives you a good enough understanding of the M1 Mac Mini. With 8GB of RAM, if you're looking to edit with Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere Pro. Let me know what you guys think about the results down in the comments. Are you surprised by how fast or how slow some of these programs performed? If you want to see anything in specific, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be sure to look into it and make a video if it's interesting enough for a lot of people or for me. Thank you guys for watching. This was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.